Great to YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode around sensors and microcontrollers. In video number 146, we looked on how to test power supplies and battery packs using a very cheap and a quite expensive electronic load. Today, I will test two astonishingly cheap electronic loads with very interesting features. At the end, you should be able to decide if such a load is a reasonable addition for your lab and which one of the two fits better. To test power supplies or battery packs, we have to load them with a defined current and we have to measure the voltage, the current and especially for battery capacity, these values also over time. So we need five different things. A load, preferably with a selectable but stable current, an ampermeter, a voltmeter, a clock, which obviously is the easiest part for a Swiss guy, a piece of paper or similar to take notes. In video number 146 you saw my quite expensive IT8512 electronic load. If we connect it to our computer, it has all we need. The meters, the load and a software for data logging. The cheaper load, however, did not have any of the measuring instruments nor the possibility to log data. But in the meantime, I got two electronic loads, which are a combination between the two, at a price between 20 and 30 dollars, which is really cool. Here they are. They look very similar to the cheap load. Their name is EDB-USB electronic load. They look very similar, are manufactured by the same manufacturer and also have similar specifications. They can be used from 0 to 13.5 or 21 volts and from 0 to 4 ampere. They support the fast charging standards QC 2.0 and 3.0 and also MediaTek Pump Express. The golden or plus version supports 35 watts and the red 25 watt. The prices are 17 or 25 dollars from Banggood and the manufacturer is called CKE Tech. Let's have a close look at the two devices. As all USB loads, they have a male standard USB connector for the input. The cheap load does not have any other connectors. The new loads have an additional female USB and a micro USB plug. What is the purpose of these additional plugs? The micro USB plug is the connection to the PC software and the female USB connector can be used to connect this load to a device like our smartphone or our Node MCU board. Inside these loads you find a load with a selectable but stabilized current, an ampermeter, a voltmeter and in the PC software you find a clock and a screen to log the data. Everything we need to do our power tests. And with a female USB connector comes an additional feature. You can use our electronic loads to measure the behavior of our devices like our smartphone or any other board you want to monitor. And this feature is even not available in the expensive load. It can replace a meter like this one. Great! The block diagram looks like that. We have a power source like the power supply, a solar panel or a battery pack. We connect it to our electronic load. Then we can either switch the internal load on and test our power source or we keep it off and connect another device to the female USB connector. Let's do some tests. First, we test the normal Bliss Wolf USB power supply. I connect the load to the power supply and want to test it with a defined load. But there is no dial to select the current nor an on off switch. You need a software to start the test. The link for the software is in the description. Fortunately, it is the same for both versions. So we connect the load to the PC, fire the software up select the right COM channel and press the connect button. Let's first do the normal tests with an increasing load. 
we start at 0.1 ampere and go up to 4 ampere in steps of 0.1 ampere and check what happens. The USB power supply is rated at 2 ampere for each of the two USB connectors. But we see it does not limit the current and it supplies up to the full 4 ampere. And the voltage stays quite stable, even at 4 ampere. To power a Raspberry Pi, this power source would be a good choice. But does it also charge a smartphone with a full 4 ampere? To test this, we connect an empty iPhone to the second USB connector. Because the electronic load part is not switched on, the smartphone immediately starts to charge. And we can read the values on the right side of the screen. If we press monitor, the CKE starts to lock the volts and the amperes over time. The device shows 5 volt and a current which starts at about 2 ampere and it is reduced over time. Some small peaks result if the phone is switched on for a moment. But all in all we discover an interesting charging curve I did not expect. So I already learned something. During monitoring the capacity is not measured. This would be a nice feature to test the efficiency of power banks. And an additional trace of the power consumed would also be nice and not very complicated as power is just a multiplication of volt times ampere. As a third test, we discharge a fully charged power bank. Of course, this takes a while. In this mode, we can select the cutoff voltage. This is particularly important if we want to discharge unprotected LiPo cells. In my case, I trust that the power bank is protected and will switch off automatically. So I select a 2 volt cutoff, which should be way below the cutoff voltage of the power bank. And because we saw before that my iPhone draws about 1.8 ampere, I want to use this current to discharge the power bank. I start the experiment and the voltage is at 4.92 volt. As soon as the internal MOSFET of the load heats up, the fan kicks in and starts to cool the device. Over time the voltage stays flat and at the end the power bank switches off, still at roughly 5 volt. In the meantime the capacity counter counts the discharged milliampere hours. And at the end we see how much capacity the power bank is able to provide. But th these devices can do more. If we create a female USB cable, we can connect the device also to solar panels or to normal batteries. And here comes an important difference of the two loads into the play. The maximum voltage. The normal version supports only 13.5 volts and the plus version supports 21 volts. By the way, you see here if you connected the plus or the normal version to your PC software. With this cable you can also use the device as a normal data logger for other experiments where you can log volts over time. And if you create a second cable with a male USB connector and two banana plugs, you can also log currents over time. Very versatile. Just a remark about the cables, because we cannot use the 4-wire method introduced in video number 146, we have to use quite thick and short cables. I suggest at least 18 AWG. Otherwise you could experience voltage drops between your power source and the CKE Tech device. Let's test what happens if we connect the maximum rated voltage to the devices. Both work up to their maximum rated voltages. Even if you go a few volts higher, they are not immediately destroyed. Let's quickly test the accuracy of the built-in meters. Without load, I connect my bench multimeter in parallel to the loads. Here are the results. With the exception of the lower voltages on the normal device, they are inside the specifications. For the next test, I connect the multimeter in series with the device and measure the ampere. I start with more than 20 volts and 3 ampere, but I only get up to 1.63 ampere. The secret behind this is that the load does not allow more than 35 watt. 
so the loads are protected, the normal one at exactly 25 watts. Here you also see the results of the current measurement. The plus version is more or less inside specs, the normal one has its problems below 1 ampere. But if you are not satisfied with these results, you even have the possibility to adjust the values in the software. What happens if we try to run the loads at the fully rated power of 25 respective 35 watts? Here you see the normal one and here the plus one. Both after 5 minutes on the full load. No obvious issues. These transistors should survive much more than 100 degrees centigrade. Summarized, we discovered a new type of device which is very versatile. It is a very intelligent combination of quite accurate volt and ampere meters. An electronic load, a software to remote control the experiment and, more important, to log the measured data. And all for 20 to 30 dollars. Of course, they have their limitations. They only support constant current mode. Real electronic loads support also constant voltage or constant power modes. But constant current is the most important mode. Their maximum voltage is 13 or 21 volts. And their maximum current is 4 ampere. My IT8512 has a maximum of 150 volt and 300 watts. For normal lab experiments, these limitations are sufficient. If you want to play with solar panels, I suggest to use the plus version, because even 12 volt panels output more than 13.5 volt under certain conditions. So all in all, a very versatile little helper for our lab. And one with a comfort which was not affordable for most of us just a few years back. Is this the best electronic load? You decide. And please keep in mind that they can also be used as data loggers. In one of the next videos I hope to show you another such interesting new generation of devices, which combine hard and software to create something new at an astonishing price. So stay tuned. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.